have the boss, CEO, master blender, founder, GPC 1502 Cigars. It's Enrique Sanchez. How was it? Hey, Jimmy. Thank you for having me oh, over. Appreciate friend. it. It's always great to be here. Thank you. And I'm lucky enough that he gave me his first cigar of the day, the 1502 Emerald. But I noticed you haven't started smoking yet. What's going well, on? I already started my day. My day started always very early. So, you know, I had it. It's I with Emerald. Now I'm moving up to the Ruby, 1502 Ruby. Okay. So it's, it's Emerald, Ruby, Black Gold. Those are for the blend selection. You know, our, our portfolio is well done like a scotch, if you want to say it. You know, you got the blend of scotch, you got the single malt, you got the better rare scotch. It's very similar to what we create in, in GPC as well. I'll drink to that. Oh, uh, you know what? I'll never let you drink alone. Mm. I cheer for that. Salud. <laughs> but I, but you, you were telling me something that you have an interesting sort of habit, sort of style that you light and then cut. Yes, actually, Jimmy. Uh, when I got started, uh, I was told actually for Cubans uh, and when I was living back in Nicaragua, and they told, always told me, you know, have the patient to light your cigar. Make sure you do not burn it, just leave the cigar well, and then you cut. When you do the opposite, when you cut the cigar and you light it, what, what happens? They always say, smoke the skates from the top, the chimney effect, and that influence your first draw. Now, if you do have the patient to do it that way, then, of course, your first draw is going to be the most clean draw you're ever going to have. So this chimney effect will help your draw by lighting first mm. and then cutting. Of mm. course, of course. You and know, remember, you, 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 you live your whole life and you learn something new. This is the beauty of the cigar show. This is the beauty of hanging out with the CEO and the boss. Now, as you are being super patient, my, my millennial OCD-ness is like, ha, ah, ah, ha. Well, well, you know, well, you have you have to be patient. That's very important. I uh, make sure that you light the cigar, don't burn the cigar. It's it's one of the key things. You know, remember, AODC has a characteristic. If you do it the right way, you will actually achieve or, or get what as a blender we're looking for when we're working in the in the new blends. So have the patience. You know, you you're not rushing. It's not a babe. It's not a cigarette. It's a cigar. It's meant to have patience in that aspect. So you know, enjoy. This is made to enjoy. So I'm going to enjoy my emerald now. Let's begin, Enrique, at the beginning. Oh, all right. So the the, the one thing after doing my research on you, the mm. one thing I've learned is puro Nicaragüense, pure, proudly Nicaraguan. Explain that to me. That actually, it will be me. And, and you know what? I'll answer that question to you. When I got started in this one, and actually the person that pushed me to the industry was Don Néstor Plasencia. And I remember meeting with him for a, a, something related with tobacco, of course, but it was not with what we have today in the table. So, and I'm there trying to pitch my idea to him. And after, I said, 20 something minutes, he goes back to me, Enrique, that, that's not going to go. It's not, it's, the business is not flying anywhere. And I'm like, oh, please, you know, trying to persuade him. And then he turns the table on me and says, make your own cigars. We'll help you. We have all the tobacco in the world, and we will support you 100%. And he told me something very interesting. He said, Enrique, you see so many people taking proud of a Nicaraguan product. You see people from the United States, from, from South America, from Cuba, Asia, Europe, everywhere. But you don't see a Nicaraguan, a true Nicaraguan, taking proud of a product with a Nicaraguan flag, with uh, bringing a little piece of our land to the rest of the world. I said, if you can become the person in the industry, because first of all, you're 100% Nicaragua, born and raised in Nicaragua, your family been living in Nicaragua for over 200 years, and you're very proud of your country. If you can combine that in the cigar, then you have something in the game. And I'm like, wait a second, well, let's start working in the blends first, and we got to be working, and that's what we create. 15 to Emma, 15 to Ruby, 15 to Black Gold. You know, I always make a sample. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. When we, when we come up with a blend, and I'm like, oh my God, this is something I never tasted before. It's, it's outstanding. It's beautiful. And, okay, the name. Uh, there, there's something there. How, what, what name should we get them? Something is screaming Nicaragua. And what better name that? The year that everything got started in my country, in the year 1502. So 1502 cigars is based on the year 1502, because what happened in 1502? Hmm. It's a beautiful story, because actually, it was Christopher Columbus and his fourth and last trip to America. He was sailing in the Caribbean Sea, 
and he, he was passing uh, Honduras. I was called Las Honduradas. Hondur, hond, Honduradas. It's the, the, the shaky waters because it was a big storm. And he got, uh, he's about to sink because the, the storm, and he got to this piece of land uh, the closest he can. As soon as he gets there, sun comes out, sunshine. And he gets in his knee, started thanking God for the exercise he got. And he named that piece of land Cabo Gracias a Dios. Thank God, Key. Thank and God for today, key. It's a borderline from Honduras and Nicaragua, and it happens in the year 1502. So that was the first time in, in, in the modern history, if you want to call it, or the new history, that Nicaragua was put as a point of, of reference, even before it was called Nicaragua. It was in the year 1502. So when you, when you say somebody from Nicaragua, 1502, they know it was, it, it was Cabo Gracia. It, it, the so usually, so, because my head usually, so, so, so your password, to log in is not 1502. <laughs> you know what? My, my kids have tried <laughs> no, that so many times. Not anymore. Right, not anymore. <laughs> change it, honey. Change it, honey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my kids have tried that many times with my credit card. Hey, how that is your payment stuff? Oh, yep. Trust me. It's not 1502. <laughs> Maybe 1503. Ah, ha, ha. Or 1501. We'll see that one. We'll see. <laughs> we'll so, let's, so let's get into Master Blender. Let's get into your mindset. Okay, you know, for me, I, I love cigars. I've been doing, I've been smoking them for a long time, but I'm still consider myself a novice. That's why I love talking with the with the with the titans of the industry, the people that are in it and are doing so well. What is, what is your mindset? How does your approach to blending? Well, first of all, Jimmy, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not expert in this. Every day you learn something new, right? And you know, if somebody said, "Hey, I have everything that I learned it, it, today." It's it's not being humble. You have to be humble in life, especially in this industry, especially when you work with tobacco. It's humble. It's very important. And, you know, a lot of people ask me, how you come up with a, blend, with a flavor? And I'm like, wait a second. I don't come up with the flavors. I don't look for the flavors. The flavor normally find me. It's the oh. other way around. It's Mother Earth. I just start with a concept. A concept, and I start developing something that you have in your mind something that you have in your head, but you cannot see it, you cannot smell it, you cannot touch it, but when you can find it, when, once you find it, you're like, that's the one, that's the beauty of it. And that's the beauty of creating. Right. I don't know if I would like to consider myself more, uh, uh, like you said, master blender, with, with all respect with the big master blenders, I'm more of, of, of uh, the creating in the aspect, more the artistic The humble part. blender. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> I do my best, I try at least. My wife always told me to be humble. I listen to my wife. So. I mean, everything starts with the concept. For example, when we work with the Emerald Ruby Black Gold, the idea was to have that cigar for the morning for the 15-2 Emerald, right after breakfast, my cigar for after lunch, my 15-2 Ruby, and, and a, a cigar for after a good steak dinner. And that was the 15-2 Black Gold. And that was the concept behind it. I'll I give you an example. When we started working with a, a creative 15 Nicaragua, uh, that was a great, great example as well because Everything started with my wife told me she was pregnant from the youngest one, Enrique Fernando. So I'm like, wait a second, I'm from Nicaragua, my wife from Nicaragua, my kid was born here in the United States. So I want to create something that screams 100% Nicaragua, and so my kid does never forget his root, being a proud Nicaragua. And that's why we say, okay, first of all, it has to have tobacco for all the four regions that we grow tobacco. You have Jalapa, Conde, Esteli, and Ometepe, all in one blend. It has to have balance, because it doesn't matter if we have all four blends, and if only one actually stands out, you have to have the balance, and it has to be united as Nicaragua. As the, we all, or Nicaragua, we all dream of one day sure. Nicaragua to be united in all aspects. Sure. So that was what we, they create in 1502 Nicaragua. So like I said, everything start with a concept. And then let the flavor, let everything out find you. Let it surprise you. And that's the beauty of creating. And the beauty about these things is obviously between the emerald, the ruby, and the black gold, it's, a, it's one for everyone. In other words, you don't have to have one for breakfast. You don't have to have one. If you like mild, you know, the emerald's your guy. If, if you like them strong, you, the black gold's your guy. Of course. So, so yes. you have that. Staying in the concept of proudly Nicaragua. Mm. When you see Esteli, when you see all these regions in Nicaragua now that are literally the center of the cigar universe, what does that do for you? Oh. That was a very tough question. You know, you, you, I'm not, not going to cry. I'm not going to get sentimental <laughs> in, the, in this aspect. You know, it's, uh, well, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's proud. It's, uh, it, it's, it's that, that, that country, the land in which I was born and raised, and I was t taught to love very much. And now I want to share it to everybody in the world. So when we do everything we do with, 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 with a brand, it's bring something to the rest of the world 
and hopefully for those people to come and visit us in Nicaragua and get to enjoy the lifestyle, everything that we live in Nicaragua for. It was, it's, it's amazing. Cigars is only one part of it. That's one of the things when people visit Nicaragua, I always ask them, where do you go? Oh, what's the Salit? It's a beautiful city, Salit. You know, we call Cigar Town in Nicaragua. But it, it, it's a beautiful city, but there's many other things to see as well, in which you can be enjoying a cigar, eating your lobster or, 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 or your wapote right in the beach, and, 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 and the thing is right in your feet, and the water just splashing around. Now, or you want to go see the, the, the coffee plantation in Matagalpa next to the rivers. I mean, it's so amazing, everything that we have to offer. It's, 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 it's a beautiful country. Now, I always ask this question because I think it's the most fascinating answer that I get. How did the cigar find you? What was your first experience that you had a cigar or somebody introduced <laughs> you and you said, well, this, uh, is, this, is, this is me, this is for me? You know what? It was a, I guess it was a, a quiet taste, if you want to put it away. But let me tell you the first story because you're going to laugh about that, was Jimmy. Okay. It's, uh, I was backpacking in Europe. I was probably 14, 15 years old at that time. I was thinking it was 19. 91, 1991, around that time. 2001. Yes, let's just put it that way. <laughs> so I, I was there and I was smoking Sally. I was smoking cigarettes. You know, I, I, I'm sorry for that. It was one, one, one of the few mistakes we, we all no, use. We, uh, it's it's not about mistakes, it's about learning. Indeed. So I was in, 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 in Antocha, a train station in Madrid, and I was smoking my cigarette, and I see all these gentlemen passing by with the cigars, and I like, you know what? I'm in Europe. Let's give it a try. You know, hostia, so, hostia, hostia, tío, puro, hostia, tío, 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 hostia. Un tabaco. So I go to a tabaco place in the near in, 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 the, in the train station and I ask for the cheapest cigars they have in the house. Oh, now, remember, I was in high school, so I was in high school budget. Either that or half a meal next day. So you know, I get the, the cheapest cigar. I buy my packet of cigarettes and you know, I go back to the, the to the to the train station and try to lead a cigar. Oh my God. I couldn't draw that cigar. Like, there's, there's no way. I, I tried all the aspects and everything, you know. And I said to myself, this is not for me. And I threw it away. And you threw it so, away? And I threw it away. I go back to my cigarettes. I know, I'm sorry for that. But it was a year after. I was in Nicaragua, in, in Managua, in my house. And one of my uncles, me, me Jose Loy, comes in with the Romeo Julieta Churchill from Cuba. And I'm like, you know, let's give it a second chance. Let's see how that goes. So he's like, you know how to light it. You know how to cut it. How to what? Oh, you! Yeah. Oh, like, by oh, the way, maybe that was the problem. You never cut it. Yeah, but no, nobody told me. I didn't have a godfather. Oh, the cigars don't come do with instruction. They don't come with an instruction book. You're right. No, you're right. No, it, it, and they, they, it, when it's your first time, they look complicated. They look very simple, but they're complicated. So I, it, it's, fun. it's a funny. It's a true story, and you know, I, it's in the reality. After that, I said to myself, never again. And I did uh, listen and learn a lot of it. And, and that's how I got into it. So I was the, a, a high school kid going to the high school party with my, my Correa Lancero, it's still with a cellophane on it at the time, right. in the early 90s, in, in my pocket. You know, all my friends are like, you know, go there, the, the, the smells. And now everybody goes to my house to look for the cigars. So I'm like, ah, took like 30 something years. Password <laughs> is 1502. <laughs> 1502. Where's that? Where's that? <laughs> change it, honey, change it. <laughs> So, so tell me about being in this business because the, the cigar industry is to me is like, like none other in the sense that, and I've said this story before and the, the folks that, that watch us on My Blend TV know it, like you could have a CEO, uh, a day laborer, and we're the same because we're having a cigar. And is that part of your mentality when you make these cigars? Because cigars for a long time had this, oh, the rich, the penthouse, the cigars are for everyone. Is that part of your process too? Well, I believe that cigars should be for anybody. There's no doubt. And we, we create cigars for everybody to enjoy it. And, that, and, and that's very important. doesn't matter in what part of the portfolio you look. You're always going to find something for everybody. So, and the beauty of this industry is that, that, that cigar unites people. Get people together. People will have nothing in common, but now they do. They do have a passion in common. And that's what we, we, we step in as, 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 a, as a manufacturer, as a blender, as a creator or, or artist, whatever you want to call it, is to provide that. In that specific moment, that either take an hour, to, a hour and a half, two hours, or the time you have to, to spare a, 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 to enjoy yourself in the aspect, you have something, it's yours. Nobody should take it away. And if you can combine that with the right company, then you have something beautiful on it. So it has to be more unique in, in that aspect. You have, to, you have to be able to enjoy it with all the, all the aspects. Everybody you can. Doesn't matter uh, where they're from or, or anything else. 
Now, we talked about Don Nestor, how he literally challenged you and, and you got your start. Just tell me about sort of learning by his side, you know, learning. What, what, what was the biggest lesson that you learned from Don Nestor? Oh, I mean, and, and so learning today, I mean, every day is, is something new. Right. But, you know, something, he was very, I remember his one when he starts telling me, trying to convince me, in which I don't know why he was trying to convince me to, to, to join this industry. And, and I, was, I was like, no, 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 no. And he's like, well, give me a chance. When I hear those, those words, sometimes it's like somebody slapping me in the face. And like, I should be on my knees asking him for right. a and chance. And he's asking you to give him I, a chance. Yeah, I think one of the key things I learned from him is to be humble. It was very important. And I remember walking into the, the first day in the, in the cigar blending room. And I worked with the two master blenders that he had in that time. And I, I was very humble in the moment and I told the guys, I've been smoking cigars for quite a while, but I never worked with tobacco in my life. So please start from scratch. And one of the, 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 the things that the key, the key components of Don Nestor Placencia it was let me lose. Let me uh, uh, do whatever I need to do and he can step to the side and then he can give me advice and everything, but let me work in my way. But it, 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 it was very interesting because that's, that's the best, best way to find yourself. Yeah. If somebody is always telling you what to do, then it's going to be really tough for you to later on to be able to create something great. So he was, but he gave me all access to all the tobacco and he gave me access to those beautiful master blenders in which today I thank you very much to Ivan and Ricardo. Now, obviously the cigar industry has given you so much and you've returned it. What, what's, your, what's your best experience? What, what, what is the most memorable thing of the cigar industry for you? Oh, there's so many. That's, that's, that would be very, very, very tough to decide which one. But there, there are so many, especially... Well, which one stands out for you? You know what? I'll tell you the best one. Okay. That's, that's the best one. I was uh, probably almost 10 years ago. I was, a, I was not in the cigar industry. I was doing, enjoying my cigars. I was, and, 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 where, where did you come from? What did you do before cigars? Oh, all, all, all over. I mean, I, my, my, my business background, it's that one, business uh, strategies. So I was a, in the, in the a tourist industry, I was in the banking industry, and I was in the electrician industry, I was in the retail industry. I was being, I've been one side of the business and on the other side of the business. Sure, sure. So it, 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 that's, that, that's, a, that's a good thing because it gave you a good perspective in business in general, but always enjoying cigars. So he said, well, you know, if we can combine everything in one, that would be perfect. But back to the story, you were asking me. I was remember in, go, in, in Managua in one of the cigar lounges. In, 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 oh, you know, let me let me go back a little bit before that one. I remember it was a Friday evening. I called one of my friends and say, you know what, what are you doing tonight? And he's like, well, I'm going out. I have this friend from Miami. She's from Nicaragua. She's coming over, and and, and we're gonna go, you know catch up. And like, oh, okay, cause somebody, that's, that's great. Cause somebody, you know, I don't want to bother. Said, no, come over. Oh, my first question was, is she cute? Is she like, yep. Right. All right, all right. So, you know, I go there and there is smoking my cigar in a cigar lounge and she walks in. And, and today it's my wife. Oh, no. I, I always say it, it's the magic of cigar. It unites people. It's something amazing. It's, it's beautiful. It's one of the things. And by the way, very good answer. Very good answer. Happy <laughs> wife, happy life. That's why I told my kids. Honey, if you mom is not happy, <laughs> nobody's happy because she was gonna make sure that I'm not happy. I'm gonna make sure you guys are not happy. So you know, everything starts from the top. All right, so Global Premium Cigars. That's what GPC, 1502 Cigars. What's next? What's, as you look to conquer more lands, what, uh, is, what is next for GPC? Well, I mean, it's a reason why we name, a, a, the name or we give the name of the company, our vision as of the company. Mm -hmm. It's definitely, we will definitely, we will be global in a point. Uh, right now we do have a, a United States, of course, at the market. We have Europe, uh, we got South Africa, we got Guatemala, we got Aruba. And uh, right now we're negotiating with almost all the, all the entire South of Asia. We are nego we started negotiation with, it was uh, Mexico. We are, I'm uh, sorry, Chile as well. You, yes, Chile. Uh, we started negotiating with uh, a, Panama, eh, Bermuda, so we're expanding everywhere, and, and wow. Europe as well, many other, Aruba, of course, and so we're, we're, we're so moving there, so we're going to be global. North, if I go to the North Pole, I'm walking around, there's, there's a polar bear, he looks at me, oh yeah, I got an emerald, it's my first one of the day. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but if he doesn't say that, 
you should give him that advice. <laughs> I, will I, I, I am packing now. I am packing now. You know, that would be one, one my, 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 my do list. You know, be in the North Pole, enjoy what if, one more cigar. I've always, I've always wanted to, because listen, I have a theory. If you want to be successful, you talk to successful people. That's, it's, it's a pretty simple theory, but I think it's important. Yeah. What is your bucket list? Like, what are the things on uh, your, that you haven't done that you want to do? What does your bucket list look like? Well, I like travel. I like to see the world for myself and experience everything they, they have to offer to you. You know, all, all the beautiful, beautiful things, you know, the food, the places, the people, all, all the aspects. So, you know, there is a, a lot of places in my bucket list in which they, I have not been really able to accomplish it, but we, we're getting there little by little. I think the, the more we space in, in the aspect, we're going to be able to hit those, those corners of, of the world. So that is for sure in, in the bucket list. A very important for me is, I would say, I always said, one of my dreams come true is later on in life, and I actually can sit down with my kids. I, we, have, we have three kids, Alejandro, Antonio, and Enrique Fernando. Um, three boys. Uh, three boys, oh boys. So it's really quiet in your house. <laughs> yeah, really right. quiet. And, and don't forget Lorenzo, which is the military snowshare. Oh, He's not quiet either. Oh my goodness. So, Sit down with them later on in life, you know, when they're, they're growing up, they have their own family, and after they're, they were invited to the house, after they're Are you ready can, to be an abuelo? And that would be great. Uh, can, uh, that, that, if I can do that with my kids, they're going to smoke a cigar with them, or even better with, with their grandkids. I would say, that's the bucket list. That would be my, my the moment I said, take me anytime. <laughs> <laughs> Before I let you go. Why are you so early? No, no, no. I, I, got, I got something for you. A friend of mine is Nicaragüense as well. Hmm. Let me see if I get this right. De cachimba. De cachimba. De cachimba. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like a de cachimba, de cachimba, de cachimba, tan, tan, de cachimba. De cachimba. Now, de cachimba is, means things are cool, cool, fantastic, awesome. Oh, I'll give you another word. Pijudo. Pijudo. I was a doy pijudo. Doy pijudo. Now, that sounds, that sounds, that sounds a little... That sounds like, whoa, <laughs> like, like, like my mom's going to come out and go, yes, no, 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 it, it doesn't matter where you go first. It's, you know, you have things where you have to go everywhere around. You know, Esteli is, is always a great place to start. I mean, that especially, right. that's when you get all the tobacco in your pocket and, you know, then you move everywhere. I mean, you, yeah. you want to see the colony cities. You have Leon, you have Granada. We're well, actually born and raised in Leon. So, you know, for me, it's the Leon side. Yeah. But Granada is a beautiful city as well, in which you have a lot to offer there. And then if you want to go to the beach, you have San Juan del Sur. You have many other places in, 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 the, in, the, in the Pacific area. In the Atlantic area, Corn Island, and everything, and it's beautiful. It's, 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 it's a una isla en el Caribe. What else can you can you ask for there? You know, but they don't have cigars, so you better bring yours in that aspect. And if you want to go to I know which ones I'm bringing though. Oh, you have to bring all the lights. That's for sure. <laughs> it's for each moment, the beauty. So there's so many places you, you all the places. Like I always said in Nicaragua we have everything. The only thing we do not have is snow. You know, and we, we're not looking for to have any time soup, but right, we do no. have a fridge full of beers. And which that that's it. That's, toy, you, you, you just want the frost on the beers. That's it. That's, that's the highest where we go. Question for you. Like, the, the, the thing that I struggle every day with a cigar is developing a palate. Because everyone's, oh, I can taste the mahogany. I can taste the chocolate. Uh, I can taste the citrus. I can't taste any of that. Now, I, I mean, I broke my nose when I was in college. I won't explain why, but I broke my nose when I was in college <laughs> and I don't smell anything. That's why when this whole COVID thing came out, well, I was like, well, I, 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 mean, I had COVID 30 years ago. Yeah, I don't know. But, but how do you develop a palate? How would you, I mean, how did you develop yours? Well, let me, let me explain something. Uh, a flavor or a smell, it's a reminder that you have of something you already tried before. You can never say it tastes like blueberries if you're not trying blueberries in your life. It's, it's simple as that. And everybody has a different experience in life. You know, uh, people from Latin America, even from Central America, uh, what we eat in Nicaragua is not the same what the, the, the guys from Costa Rica or Guatemala. It, it's, it's different. It varies with different spices, different, different, different rough materials. Everything changes. So that's the memory. And the more you try it, the more memory you have in your, in your, in your conscious and subconscious. So it's, in that more, it's more a smell than it is a taste. It's a combination of, of, of that one. So it, 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 what I'm say is for you, it might taste something or smell this way. For a person from, from uh, 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 Germany or, or South Africa, 
it might be completely different. Or it's now it's getting away exactly what you get. So when people ask me, what's the flavor profile? I, will, I never like to lean to that one. I would say, I want you to try it because yeah. I don't want to influence saying that it's going to taste something that you might not get it. Be sure. Not because sure. you, 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 you don't have that, that, that profile, it's because you have another experience in life. So it's different in, in that aspect. So if I give you a cigar, for you, maybe for you it will be a little bit more spicy. If I give it to a Mexican, there's no spice whatsoever. It's it's experience they have. It's it's, 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 it's and that's a bit of how a same product can be a different aspect. It depends on the world you enjoy it. That, that's the beauty of yeah. cigars. Because I've I've always looked at cigars, and, and you tell me if this works for you, Enrique. Is a cigar is sort of like flipping through a photo album or maybe for, for millennials flipping through your your digital phone this reminds me oh you know me and my dad or me and my uncle or that time we went to to the beach that weekend it, it that's the beauty of of, of it course. for you right yes it's the moment it's your moment it's your time nobody should take it away from you i mean have you ever seen somebody smoking a cigar and crying everything is related with happiness hey you know i I did my best business ever, light a cigar. It's my, it's, it's my daughter at a wedding, hey, let's have a cigar. You know, it, it, it's Friday night, let's have a cigar. Everything's related with happiness. And it should be like that. And when you have that moment, nobody should be able to take it away from you. It's your moment. That's why we always said, relax and enjoy. It's part of, 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 of another slogan that we have. And actually we have, I always said, we have three rules in 52 cigars. One is, rule number one is relax. Rule number two, it's enjoy. Rule number three, never forget rule number one and number two. It's always about relaxing and enjoying. So at that moment, it's the way you should be doing it. So when somebody says, do you smoke cigars? No, I do enjoy cigars. I do it's enjoy. Quite different. I like, I'm not going to say that anymore. You there convinced you me. There you go. That's why he's the boss. Enrique Sanchez. <laughs> okay, one last before I let you go. Sure. The band. Uh, this is the Emerald. Okay, the band, very classic, almost like a family crest mm. sort of thing. Band on or band off? Every, you know, I, I, host a, I host a cigar podcast for Cigar Snob Magazine, and, they, and that was one of our questions. Cigar, band on or band off? What would, well, what's your what's your recommendation? It's, Obviously, you don't want to you know you don't want the thing to burst in the flames. Very simple. I always I always tell everybody, it's your cigar. Do whatever you want with it. Light it the way you want. Cut it the way you want. And if you want to keep the band or play the band off, it's your choice in the end. There's a, I remember a, well when you read the history back in the days, you know people used to take the band off so you insult the the person next to you while you're smoking on the other. That's that was two hundred years ago. So, you know, now it's, you can do whatever you want with your cigar. You can, you, it's your right to enjoy it however you want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Finally, where can we find everything? Instagram, Facebook, where can we find, where, where can we find you guys? Everything, it's social media or to a website, everything's the same. It's either Global Premium Cigars or 512 Cigars, you want to be more specific with the brand. Because right now we do have uh, two brands specific, uh, 512 Cigars, the one you already talked about, but we also have Cachitos. Cachitos. Cachitos you Not know, de Cachimba. No de Cachimba, de Cachitos. Cachitos. Now what you does know, Cachito mean? A short one. Little one. Right? Hey, little dame, dame un Cachito. A little guy. A little one. So it, it's, a, it's a four by, by 50 uh, in the ring guy for those 30, 40 minutes to, to enjoy a cigar. Perfect. Uh, eh, Primo cigars, no, 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 no right, eh, right. of course, lo, lo, eh, long fillers and everything, as, as it should be. And, and, but there's other brands that we're coming out to the market eh, very soon, and which they, they might not be under 50 to cigars. Right, is it a so, secret? Come in, we, we're going to yeah, get the exclusive here on my yeah. blend. You, you know, we'll, have we'll, another we'll, one. We'll see, we'll see after. <laughs> see, <laughs> so we'll, we'll get you the scoop here on my blend. You know, listen, an absolute pleasure. The CEO, 1502 Cigars, Global Premium Cigars. It's Enrique Sanchez. An absolute pleasure, my friend.